Good morning. How are you today? I'd like to welcome you to morning prayer. I'm Ruth Pattison. And um, I've been trying to connect a little bit with, um, I'm outside most days, most of the day, <laughs> um, with our roofing, but just in a more um, contemplative way, I guess, trying to connect with the earth at this time of year, how, um, you know, we're at that sort of fall equinox time of year, and that's a time of going inward, and where the the work is, uh, the spiritual work is um, internal, and it's the kind of what goes on under the surface of the earth, and the way of root growth, and strengthening, and um, just the cycle of you know, acorns dropping to the ground and um, seeds that will become a different thing. And of course, that's always a symbol of resurrection. But so we have to stay with that in the fall and winter to allow things to um, grow and resurrect and change. So, um, and one thing I have here is um, just a little bundle of herbs. I went on a brief nature walk. <laughs> more of like 12 pieces just around the house. And um, so the fragrance of the sage and rosemary and a little touch of, of thyme, um, just those kind of earthier kinds of herbs that we use at this time of year. And a piece of bark with lichen and moss just to have where I can see the, um, the offering that the earth makes to our lives. So beautiful the different colors of green and the, the crusty bark. And then I would like to invite you to try a little uh, childhood practice. I don't know if you used to um, collect leaves and do rubbings of the leaves with your children or when you were a child. And, you know, you just put it under a piece of paper and, um, and rub it with a pencil. And as you do it, it's very... It's very um, reflective because or meditative because it's slow it's a slow practice and as you um, rub against the leaves and the veins the far reaches and pits of the leaves point of view on the paper and then um, you know you can see the structure of the leaf the sort of the um, leaf skeleton if you will and it's it's surprising the things that come to mind as you as you might um, do that practice as you give that a try. I know it's a kid thing. It's a childhood type of thing. But um, you might like it. <laughs> this is one that I did that I loved doing because um, I did so many on a page that it uh, made me think of fire. And um, this time of year and, and just the idea of tending a fire and what it takes to tend a fire and what comes of tending a fire. So anyways, that's just a little bit of this time of year and um, root vegetables are another way to get in touch with that, er the earthiness of um, equinox and autumn. And the sweet potatoes that I learned to harvest in Kenya on our trip and also then I grew some of my own at our community garden and um, at High Point. Because the digging into the earth to harvest them is a thrilling um, and hot, sweaty exercise. But to dig in and the sweet potatoes grow lengthwise into the earth, and it, it's just like digging treasure. Um, so we had sweet potatoes last night, and we're having them again tonight <laughs> just to enjoy that. I'm going to shift the light here. Um, you can turn to Psalm 140. Um, See if that might be a little bit better, um, <laughs> perhaps. Psalm 140 is our psalm for today. The gospel is Luke, again, chapter 8, verses 1 through 15. A really good um, gospel because of what, we were just, what I was talking to you about there, about seeds. Hmm. God as the sower. And then... Um, the Old Testament reading is Micah, 
Micah chapter 3, 9 through chapter 4, 59. Maybe I can turn it a little bit this way. That light is just kind of so harsh. All right, so let's begin with our morning prayer on page 78 in the prayer book. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm waiting to hear those words. I get to go there some for Sunday mornings um, to the church itself, the house of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> so as we worship online, I have the privilege of physically being in that place. And this past Sunday, we had the delightful experience of blessing the animals in the afternoon in the parking lot. So that was delightful. As you know, that's the house of the Lord. All creation is the house of the Lord. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Page 80. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The Venite, Venite, on page 82. Venite adoremus. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. So this psalm appointed for today, as I mentioned, is Psalm 140. There are 13 verses in this psalm. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violence who divides evil in their hearts and stir up strife all day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violence who are determined to trip me up. The proud have hidden a snare for me and stretched out a net of cords. They have set traps for me along the path. I have said to the Lord, You are my God. Listen, O Lord, to my supplication. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wicked, O Lord, nor let their evil plans prosper. Let not those who surround me lift up their heads. Let the evil of their lips overwhelm them. Let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the mire never to rise up again. A slanderer shall not be established on the earth, and evil shall hunt down the lawless. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the poor and render justice to the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name, and the upright shall continue in your sight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So this Old Testament lesson today is from Micah. Don't you um, kind of get the picture that the prophets are about justice and righteousness and good things? Micah chapter 3, verse 9. Hear this, <clears throat> you rulers of the house of Jacob and chiefs of the house of Israel, who abhor justice 
and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with wrong. Its rulers give judgment for a bribe, its priests teach for a price, its prophets give oracles for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, Surely the Lord is with us, no harm shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall attribute between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more, but they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a beautiful vision of justice and righteousness, the goodness of God and God's people. <laughs> so let us respond to that lesson with a canticle. And we will say um, Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Isn't that a delightful image? You shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. Mm -hmm. With all the spring water we have on the shelf, you know, do we lose touch with those rich metaphors? You know, if you ever actually go to a spring, <laughs> the spring comes to us in a, in a bottle with a cap, but still, pour out that spring water into a glass and um, drink some salvation. The gospel appointed for the day. The gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> the parable. Soon afterwards, he went, out, he went on through the cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Tuza, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. When a great crowd gathered, <clears throat> and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. 
Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil. When it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others they speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones on the path of those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe only for a while and in a time of testing fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not mature. But as for that, in the good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience and endurance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I think in the course of any given day, <clears throat> I am all those soils. That's a good uh, sort of internal inventory. You can use this parable, um, you know, at breakfast, you know, Where's where's the the earth of your being at at noon time, um, the soil of your heart? Where are you? Are you choking? Is, is it too much for you this day? Um, and that phrase, um, you know, it's, it's taken away. Uh, the devil comes and takes away the word, so they may not believe and be saved. There are moments in a day when I think I'm not saved. <laughs> God is so um, generous with the seed; he throws it everywhere. He's not concerned that some will, some of it will grow up and um, be choked out, or that some will fall in the cracks of the path. Um, he just throws and throws and throws. And somewhere inside of me and inside of you, there is some good earth where the seed will take root. Somewhere down in there. And that will be uh, so rich. So the song of praise on page 90, Canticle 13, in response to this gospel reading. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, <clears throat> and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect for today, the collects on page um, 98, 99, and 100. Uh, the, a collect for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect from Mission on page 100. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us say together the litany for um, these particular days in which we live. <clears throat> I hope occasionally you work on your own litany and use it. See what it what it pulls from the depths of you to put on paper as a repetitive kind of um, prayer. So the response to Lord in your mercy is graciously hear us. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold, for the health and well-being of our nation, for those working on the front lines for our care, and for all who work in the service industry, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, sorry, graciously hear us. I just said that. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress, Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. By the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, 
we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace into this good day. <clears throat>